Hey everybody, this is Cindy, Palm Springs Cindy, and I'm here with Eric, and we have a great topic for you guys today. Um, we're gonna talk about RVs, about um, coaches, fifth wheels, and what are, what are the pros, what are the cons, what's it like owning and living in one or traveling in one? So uh, Eric is really the expert because that's exactly what he has done. So Eric's going to be doing a lot of the talking, but before we begin, I want to just talk about, like, let's define the terms that we're going to be using. So what's the difference between a fifth wheel, a coach, an RV? Um, talk to, like, explain that to us. RV is a recreational vehicle, and it can be anywhere from a tent trailer up to a, a motorized bus and anywhere in between. So, so while we're gonna talk about life in an RV, do we talk about, do we say coach, RV, what do we say? We say RV, it's okay. a recreational vehicle. That's what it means. It means for recreation. Okay, so when, when Eric and I talked about this and what we wanted to share on this video, that it really ended up to being about six particular topics. So we're gonna to try to try to stick to those topics. And the first one is like, like what is your purpose? What kind of vehicle will, would you buy regarding like, why do you want it? What's the purpose of you buying that? Well, if you're a weekender, like I call it, or you're, you wanna take your family out in, in it, it's, it's bringing your family together. I've traveled in a, uh, a 30 foot uh, C class and took a 14 day, 14 day trip up the coast of California with my children. Mm -hmm. And it's a very unique situation and it brings your family together. And you're sleeping on top of each other, you're cooking, cleaning, whatever you're doing. So traveling. Travel. One reason you'd buy something like that would be to travel with your family. Correct. Okay. The second reason is if you wanted, if you, um, are semi-retired and you, let's say you have three or, uh, three weeks to uh, three months off and you can take it and travel um, in the best time of the year that you're off and you're semi full-time. And then, then there's the full-timer where you're in the RV all the time. You can either uh, be stationary and be in it or you can travel in it or a combination of the two. Okay, but you are, what would you, you're full-time. I'm full-time, but I'm, I'm in a, I'm stationary. I own a, a lot in a resort uh, RV community. And so mine doesn't uh, move anymore. But um, you've actually been both. You've been yes. a traveler and then now you're full-time. That's correct. So what would you say the financial benefits or like what, what are the pros and cons financially of living or owning an RV? Financially, you're, you're, it's going to be, it's, it's not, it depends if you're traveling all mm -hmm. the time. If you go to a spot and you spend a month and then you travel to another spot and you spend another month and you move around in that area, it's not going to be as expensive if you're on the, the, the road because of fuel costs. Mm -hmm. and mm. parking costs. Mm. So while you're traveling, you also got to park it somewhere unless you can get free free overnight parking such as in a, a Walmart or a truck stop. So let's say you are, you're in your RV or in your case a coach and you are, um, you're not a traveler. You live there, you're living in it. So what does that cost? I mean, do you pay property taxes? Do you, like, what are the expenses? I, I own the lot that I'm on. I pay the property tax on it, only on the property itself, not, of course, not on my vehicle. I pay a uh, uh, licensing fee on it, of course, insurance on it, uh, which isn't, uh, which is, in my case, about $350 a month for the tow car and the motorhome. And, um, that's pretty much it. I have a, a HOA fee also, but that includes uh, all the amenities in the park, golf, tennis, pools. I, I get a gardener, water, trash, and basic cable all included with that homeowner's fee. Okay, so so you, you're in a coach, 
you have it paid for. Yes. You have it parked in a in a beautiful uh, uh, park, coach park, mm -hmm. RV park. So, you do you do you pay property taxes because you're sitting on land? Land that I own, and I pay property tax onto the state, but only for the land. It, there's no structure on it. In fact, they will not let uh, those type parks be built anymore because there are no structures on it. And because of that, the state gets cut out of property tax. So any uh, parks being built now have to have a permanent structure. So you, so you're, here's your coach, it's sitting on a plot of land. You pay property tax on yes. that land that it's sitting on. Yes. Okay. And then you have to also pay HOAs Correct. for the park that you're parked in. Correct. And then that H, the park that you're in has amenities. Talk about those amenities. Well, that's what I was, I was saying. Yeah. Okay, one, we have 24-hour security. Okay, manned. that's good. That's nice. Okay, it's, we have a, and patrols. Mm -hmm. And then we have a, a 27 holes of golf. We have 10 tennis courts, 13 pickleball courts, a full gym, owners, uh, two clubhouses, uh, a, a beauty salon, a restaurant. Oh, a beauty salon? Yeah, there's a beauty mm -hmm. salon, um, a restaurant. And then I get, like, like I said, my gardeners, they do my lawn and um, my water trash uh, are included on top of that and basic cable. So what is your HOA? It's $430 a month. So for that, you get a lot. You get your cable, you get your, all the, the tennis courts, the golf, yes. the, all yes. that stuff. Yes. Okay. So now, you, yeah. now what about, um, okay, you did say you got a uh, TV cable. Yes. If it's basic, you get, I don't know, 35 okay. channels. If you want anything else, of course, you upgrade to whatever you want. You pay mm -hmm. for it separately. I have a satellite on my unit, so I pay for that separate from what I get from the park. Okay, so another thing I'm thinking of, if, if you are our age, if you're empty nesters, if you're retired, um, you're in your early 70s, I know personally, I have thought of, you know, wouldn't it be fun to have an RV? Wouldn't it be fun to travel and in my own RV and stop at different places where it's beautiful? But I think, and what I want to ask you is, what effort does it take to, I mean, you don't just jump in an RV, turn the key on and go someplace. I mean, it, it takes, I would think, a lot of muscle, a lot of effort to get on the road. It, uh, once you have it p packed up the first time mm -hmm. and you're going to a destination uh, and you can go through what they call stop at RV parks that have pull through parking, which means you don't have to disconnect your uh, uh, tow car. Um, you can travel pretty, uh, pretty quickly and pretty easily and not a lot of effort. Uh, once you get set up uh, and you're staying for a while and it, it's work. It basically mm -hmm. is work. And also the, the, the biggest drawback is if something goes wrong with one of your components, such as one of your slide outs. Uh, which now what's are, a slide out? A slide out is a movable wall that expands the interior of your motorhome. I have three on my motorhome. I have two on the uh, passenger side and one on the left, uh, the driver's side, which is a, what they call a sliding wall. It's mm -hmm. over 30 feet long. So it brings out the living room and the kitchen and expands it out by six feet. It's actually, I have a kitchen floor that's big enough you can dance in it. <laughs> okay, so. Macarena. Yeah, you can Macarena in it. And so <laughs> I have Alexa, I have four TVs in my motorhome. I have uh, surround the sound. I have just about washer and dryer Anything that you need, I have it. So as luxurious as it can be, it still takes muscle power to get it up and running to go on a little yes. trip or to get it um, undone from a trip or to get it parked to live in permanently. Yes. And it used to be that the thing is with the motorhome, you're sleeping in your own bed every night. Right. That's And you have a private bathroom. You, know, you have your own bathroom. Right. And I have... 
luxuries have a bath and a half in my unit. Um, so when I'm driving the front bath, the half bath is accessible while we're driving. Um, the rear bath is accessible, but very difficult to get to if you're driving. So that's why they put a half bath in mm -hmm. it. But that being said, um, nowadays, and I'm going to be honest, I don't think it's economically beneficial to be in a motorhome of my size uh, with the fuel prices that they are now mm -hmm. and the cost of going to a RV park uh, to spend the night. So if you're paying 50 to $75 a night to go stay in a RV park, just to park it where you can go to a motel right. for uh, maybe 25 bucks more. And that 25 bucks more, well, in a car, I'm spending uh, $70 uh, in fuel where if I'm in my motorhome, I'm spending 300. Mm -hmm. right. So you start adding that up and going on a road trip with the car and going to motels and eating out is, there's no difference. In fact, financially not much different. There's not financially not much different. Right. And easier regarding muscle power of, yes. you what know, you pulling doing? this in and pulling that out and yeah. Easier okay. driving. You can drive your car at 80 miles an hour, motorhome, pulling a car. Mm -hmm. Top end is 70 if you can get that out of it. Most of the time you're dealing around 63 miles an hour. Well, the sad news is, like, if you're our age and you've thought about, you know, when we retire, when, you know, we're going to get an RV, we're going to travel, but it's not that, it doesn't sound like it's that simple. Versus if you're a young family and you could afford it, and you have kids, you know, they can go to the bathroom in there. You don't have to stop and go to the bathroom. You've got food in your fridge. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like if you're younger and stronger, more energetic, you know, that would be a great way to travel. If you are our age and you want to scale your life down and you want to make your life a bit more simple, and so you decide you're going to buy or you have a coach, you're going to mm -hmm. put it in a park, mm -hmm. park it like you do mm -hmm. with a, in a beautiful area with golf courses and pickleball and restaurants and all that stuff. Um, what, um, let's see, what is the... The social the aspect. So, yes, that's what I was getting at. Yes, the social aspect is fabulous. Where I have, we used to have block parties and potlucks and... Uh, during this season between November and uh, May 1st, they have um, uh, basically rock bands come in. Mm -hmm. and like live music. Live music, and you dan they have dancing, and they have a golf club, and they have pickleball clubs, a tennis club. Uh, they have tons of pools. Ten of, we got eight pools, mm -hmm. um, and there's activities all the time. Mm -hmm. So it depends on how far you want to get into it. I, I'm lucky to be in one of the top resorts in the United States. Right. And so, and the weather here is fabulous, except for today. It's... 120. One degree. 121. I said, don't worry, Eric, we'll stay indoors and we'll make a video. <laughs> that's what we're doing today. And that's we're looking we're out at 121 degrees. But like, like when I was at Eric's, I noticed that you know where his uh where his coach is parked it also includes property i mean he has a beautiful outdoor patio that holds two i think two patio tables and chairs and and fountain and string lights and, and uh, fire, flowers fire pit, fire pit. And smoker so, barbecue yeah. So, so it lends itself to being outdoors, which also means people travel driving their golf carts. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you're in a golf cart, you have to go slowly and then you look and, at each other's uh, patios and people are sitting out and you say hello. And so it very, it's very much social. And so if you're older, it's an, it's a nice way to live and meet friends and be live an indoor outdoor lifestyle and as much as you want you know if you if you're kind of like more private then you know you don't have to say hello <laughs> you don't have to invite people over you can say hello but not no. necessarily get way involved so i think that that rv style of life offers a lot to people our age you know it it's a it's a condensed form of living uh it's 
in you you have living outdoors on your patio is almost like part of your house and people are coming and going in their golf carts it's, and in that way it's social um i think it would be uh let's see i do have, have my notes written down um so I don't know. What do you think? What, add, anything else to add about you know no, it, it socialness? It of, depends on it. De way depends on where you, what RV park you're at, mm -hmm. what activities they will they supply. It might even has a uh, plays. They have uh, comedians come up. I mean, mm -hmm. they have social events for uh, all the time, and so they get everybody together. There's always and something to do. There's always something to do. Okay, now I did ask Eric, I said, what about, like, are you ever able to host Thanksgiving? Are you ever, ever able to have the kids, your grandkids or whatever, over for Christmas? So how does living in that kind of, in a coach, in that kind of a park, enhance or not your your hosting ability to your, with your family? Well, basically your family has become your friends. Oh, okay, yes. Okay, so you are you have a group of friends that you have, and I have a table outside. I can, mm -hmm. I can, Has two. we have six at one, I have a table mm -hmm. that seats six, and then I have a fire pit, I can seat four or five around. I could probably have 10 people for dinner. Mm -hmm. I've done that before. And um, if my family was closer, I probably could uh, host a Thanksgiving dinner. Um, I have a smoker outside and a barbecue and whatever else I have. Um, I can do all that outside. But you could also have grandkids over and they could be in the pool. Yes. They could be in the golf cart. Yes. They could putz around, you know, like walk the dogs and sit on the patio mm -hmm. with the twinkle lights on. So <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't necessarily restrict family capability of them visiting. Just the amount of sleeping room you have. Right. That's the big drawback. I can sleep four in there. Um, so max, mm -hmm. and so unless I put a sleeping bag on the floor <laughs> for mm -hmm. the grandkids, but I, I do have a, a couch that turns into a bed, a queen. So that's where they, my daughter, my granddaughter uh, slept. And one, uh, one kind of last thing, um, we, we did discuss this and I said, you know, if you're a couple, you know, if you're married, if you are with a partner or whatever, and you're living in a coach, it's very close proximity. So because it's a smaller place to live, you know, you don't have like a den to go watch TV in while your partner is in the main room watching TV. You know, you're, you're very close to one another 24 seven, 12 months a year. And that could be a good thing or it could kind of not, not be a good thing. So, would you have an an experience? Well, I do have experience with that. Um, I my my coach, I have uh, four TVs in it. One is in the bedroom. It's it can be separated by uh, sliding doors, cut off, and then the living room. I have a big screen TV in the living room, so we can set you know somebody they can watch different programs on each different TV if for wanted to be separated for a few hours. And uh, otherwise, or take off in the car, <laughs> I don't, you know, or go to the pool, or go to the pool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah, but but you you got to be pretty tight <laughs> with the person you're with. Yeah. Okay. It's like uh, I guess taking a world cruise and you're in the same cabin for six months. Yeah, and I think that's <laughs> something to uh, to think about if you're considering living full time in a coach. You know, like I will say again, I've been to Eric's coach, it's beautiful, it's it's pretty darn big. It has a beautiful outdoor area with two big patio tables and, you know, flowers and a, a fountain. Yes. And so, you know, yes, you can always go sit outside, especially where we live, the weather's always nice. But it is something to think about if you do choose to live in an RV, that it, it is close proximity to your partner. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that your everything is condensed yes. in an RV. Meaning when you get out of bed to go, you know. What? Potty at the Oh, you have night. to use the restroom. No, well, like well you got your, your two steps instead of maybe <laughs> 10 or 15. Okay? Everything's condensed. Yeah. The refrigerator is yes. only... 
four steps mm -hmm. from the side of the bed. Mm -hmm. The bathroom's only three steps. So mm -hmm. everything's really close. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of like remember that. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, we are, we're going to wrap this up. Um, I think, you know, to sort of summarize, um, Eric's given a lot of good information regarding living in an RV. Do you want it, are you going to use it or buy one just, just to travel, to go from one spot to another spot? And, or do you want it to really live in full time? And if so, there are different things to consider. It's in all, everything that I said today is my experience. Mm -hmm. Last, uh, I've been in one for 14 years. Mm. And yeah. so it's what I found out. We hope this has given you guys some insight, some information to what it's like traveling and or living full time in an RV. This is Palm Springs, Cindy saying, Mwah. Uh, P.S. I love you and until Good our next conversation. conversation.